Now onto the charging process. A little secret a lot of people don't know about if you don't want to use the button inside the car to open the trunk. Uh, we have this nifty little emblem that slides. There's some of the batteries. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the trunk. These are 114 amp hour batteries. Um, there's eight in the trunk, nine, ten, eleven, so three under the hood. Um, we have our charger here. Now, there's my disconnect for the batteries. That's plugged in now. The charger's plugged into the battery pack now. Uh, there's actually two battery packs. Uh, main main drivetrain battery pack and then under here where the original starting battery is I have two 12 amp, 12 amp hour so a total of 24 amp hour uh, deep cycle um, mobility scooter batteries absorbed glass mat to power the accessories electronics and whatnot um, thus my switch to I, I had a problem with that draining and I used the small scooter batteries in order to reduce the weight on the on the car um, did make a difference uh, so I have 10 pounds worth of auxiliary batteries instead of 60 or 70 pounds if I were to use a uh, full-size battery. Um, that one is charged by a float charger down here. It's an automatic and desulfating float charger, so you don't have to worry about overcharging those. Um, and then I have my big capacitive chargers, which I build these. They work extremely well on any kind of lead acid battery. Absorbed glass mat, flooded, AGM. Um, I prefer flooded for electric cars unless the batteries are going to be inside the passenger compartment or gassing. You don't want to breathe that in. So uh, right now all my batteries are outside the passenger compartment and the uh, trunk is vented. So I'm not worrying about that too much. Um, so charging is my extension cord. There's the uh, gas cap, oh, excuse me, I mean, uh, charging port, let me correct here. So, open the gas tank, or gas cap, charging cap, press the button. That pops open. And we plug right into that. Now, um, if for some reason you do manage to kill your auxiliary battery, you will not be able to open that, that cap. Which, there's a secret little string here provided by the manufacturer of the car, the original manufacturer. Pull that, and that also pops that open. So, let's plug her in. This vehicle is designed to charge on a 110 outlet, 110, 120 volts. Although, I build my battery chargers, these lovely thing, if you want to change the actual plugs type on this thing, you can plug it directly into a 220 volt outlet. Or 208 for commercial power lines, um, 220 or 240 for everything else, um, and it will just charge a lot quicker. Um, so far, this thing gets a completely dead full charges in 12 hours or less. So I never needed anything more than a 110 outlet. Uh, so as I was saying, auxiliary battery charger will automatically start charging the auxiliary battery once plugged in. And the this one we put on a timer as capacitive chargers are not smart, meaning they will not turn off when your pack is fully charged. Not without lots of electronics and gizmos making it way over complicated. Best thing to do is if you think your battery is pretty much dead, put it on the full 12 hour charge. If you don't run it down that much, just don't put the timer on for that much. And once again, a full charge. Plug in the uh, multimeter here. Full charge. Oh, looks like from sitting we re regained some juice. A full charge, like I said, will be about 143 volts. Uh, right now, from sitting, lead acid batteries can regain a small portion of their charge just by sitting um, as uh, chemical reactions, keeping up and whatnot, etc., etc. I'm not going into details on that. Now I'm going to turn my timer on. I'm just going to turn it on a little bit right now just to demonstrate. I don't, I'm actually going to shut the charging off. It's not quite 7 p.m. 
I, am, I have severely discounted electrical rates to call time of use that start at 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., which is perfect because it takes 12 hours to charge the car. And I get 12 hours of dirt cheap electricity, less than 5 cents a kilowatt hour. So, right now charging 137. Now, if you're going by voltage, how you know your battery pack is charged when the voltage meter reads 10 to 15 percent higher than what your fully charged pack voltage is, is when you know the pack is charged. Um, or a lower voltage sustained for a longer period of time. Uh, since this pack is a rather large pack and close to the maximum size pack you're going to be able to charge on a 110, 120 volt outlet. Um, of course, like I said earlier, full charge is 143 volts. Uh, the pack, while the charger is going, will read fully charged on this car uh, when it reads uh, when it's been sitting at about 150, 153 volts for maybe a half hour or so. Or if you really start hearing the batteries boil, which um, I've never got to that point unless I was trying to desul desulfate the pack. Nice thing about these chargers is they do desulfate lead acid batteries. So, helps you extend these batteries life quite a bit. Um, as it sits right now, I love the Walmart Deep Cycle Everstart Max batteries because they come with a two-year free replacement warranty. Electric cars are hard on batteries. Even your four or $500 batteries that you get that are designed for electric cars do not carry warranties that good. Um, so, after two years, or even if you have a failure sometime in between, just walk on into a Walmart, grab a new one off the shelf, take it up to the front desk, and they'll exchange it uh, Exchange it for a replaced one. Just don't tell them you're using it for an electric car. Otherwise, they'll look at you with a dumb look and say, oh, I don't think we can exchange it. That's just because the IQ of some of these people are not that high. Uh, best thing to do is keep it simple. Good old, uh, good old saying, keep it simple, stupid, works best. Uh, and these batteries are less than 100 bucks a pop. Very, very good use for your money. Um, I've got quite a few miles on these as of this video. I think I'm almost at like eight or nine or 10,000 miles on this pack of batteries. Not a single failure yet. All of them are holding fairly strong. And in fact, we had a nice power outage here in October a couple months ago uh, where I used this battery pack from this car to power a number of lights and other electronics in my house for four or five hours until the power came back on. You can see that video somewhere in my YouTube account uh, where, yeah, you're just gonna have to look for it. Uh, yeah, so. All right, that's it for this video. I'm at the maximum size for my upload. Uh, one more video coming up, just demonstrating some of the LED headlights and fog lights that I put on the car. Um, next video.